welcome to another episode of the Waffle Press Movie Podcast. I'm your host, Diego Crespo. It's 2017. 2016's God. over. It's dead. Thank God. Even though time is just a construct made by humans. Dude, we so survived. There's no real thing. But <laughs> yeah, it feels good to get out of that hellhole. Um, and, then we, and, and then we still have an orange demagogue as president. And then we woke up into a new one. Yeah, but you know what? That's all right. No one saw him get inaugurated, really, anyways. More people marched against him today at the time of recording, and that is just... Fantastic, and I want to give a big shout out to that. Mm-hmm. Bigly uh, shout out, yeah, bigly shout out to shout out. to all the women marches across the globe. And uh, if you see a Nazi, go ahead and punch one in the face because that's <laughs> just an American pastime by this point. The protest was huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great protest. The, the best the, protesters, it was the greatest the best. protest ever. Uh, but we're going to talk about some movies now, which is much well, okay, okay. not entirely better because there's some movie news we want to talk about. Uh, but first. Again, I am Diego Crespo, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce the rest of the panel. Okay. It's uh, Gene Aversa. How are you doing, guys? Nick Valero. Emma Crow. Yay. Thank you again, Emma, for uh, for being our sound engineer. Uh, oh. Renee is still around, but Emma's cooler. Don't tell Renee that. <laughs> no, Emma, Emma, Emma and Renee actually had to do a duel to the death. It's true. Renee she, is no longer around. Good. Well, actually, Renee is around. It's just his head, though. She she mounted it and stuffed it. It's, it looks yeah. beautiful, though. Yeah, it looks he, beautiful. He's right outside the door. When you come in the comic store, he's a threat to everything else. So. Yeah, and uh, that's actually under City Comics in Uptown Whittier. Uh, Underneath it says, do not steal. Yeah. <laughs> so when you guys come in, you're like, what's that smell? Just look up. Oh, that's Renee. Yeah, don't worry about that. Don't steal. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, first off, we've got um, some catch-up news. Uh, the biggest thing from our time off is that Carrie Fisher has since passed away, uh-huh. and uh, we wish her family well, mm-hmm. and that is just so sad. You know, Princess Leia. Did you guys ever get a chance to meet her? I did uh, not, no, no, but I know you did. I did. I did. I, I, I got to meet her uh, for one of her comedy specials that she had did in Brea, in mm-hmm. which that was awesome. Because Was that uh, the 2010 one? It was the 2010 one, yeah. It was uh, It was really cool, though, because when we fr- when we got there, it was like all seated. It's It was like very weird dining seating. When you went to the Brea Improv, if you've been to the Brea Improv, like no. that's not usually how you sit. And when she came out, she actually came out with her dog, oh, who yeah. was a puppy at the time. It's a service dog, right? Uh, yeah, but yeah. it was, it was really funny though, because it's she walked Gary. out. Yeah, Gary. it was Gary. She, it, Gary was a puppy at the time. And then, oh, okay. um, as she walked out, she was like high-fiving everyone. Mm-hmm. And she walked out right in front of me and my brother's table. And we were like, Gary. And she like high-fived me and Justin. And we were like, <laughs> fuck yeah. And her show was really interesting too, because it was all a Q and A. It was a giant Q and A. And you would write on slips of paper of what exactly you wanted to ask her. And then she would randomly go into a hat and just pull it out and go like, oh, this is what happened here. And she would, a- she would answer as truthfully as possible. Right. And she had clips and different stuff like that and really funny shit. Can, can you, uh, was it, uh, I think you told the, me uh, the, which Her- the Harrison fu- Ford. Funniest cocaine. thing she had told us was about the, the fact that her Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill <laughs> all were fucking her Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, uh, not Mark Hamill and Billy, um, D. Billy D. Williams were stoned out of their minds and drunk <laughs> on the set of Hoth. <laughs> Are not on Hoth on uh, in Cloud, Cloud City. City yeah. in, in is, that, is that real? That's the, think, that was real. Oh and, what she, and what she said is, she goes, "We had just partied with the Rolling Stones <laughs> the night before we shot this." Then she, and she goes, "And if you look at the scene where they just barely land, and then Lando comes out and everything like that, and he greets everybody, you can see Harrison Ford in the <laughs> very corner for a split second laugh, and you start seeing him laughing because he's still pretty stoned." And then she goes, "And I will never forget what Billy." Williams said to me because it's that scene where he leans in and he goes to go kiss her on the ear and everything like that and he goes you have really he goes you have very beautiful lips I would love to see them wrapped around my big black uh. Jesus. And, then she, and then he backs away and she goes I was so stoned and I didn't know what to do <laughs> Wow. So her, she was she was hilarious. She knew exactly how to like move a crowd and different mm-hmm. stuff like that. She was a very cool lady. Yeah, and yeah. of course her her mother Debbie Reynolds passed away. Uh, yeah, fucking immediately after, and that's yeah. so like my heart goes out to that entire family yeah. and was, Billy Lord. I was actually really sad because I wanted another uh, Halloween Town movie. Oh yeah, I, that one that was never gonna happen. But <laughs> that, that I was wanted another one. Damn yeah. it, Halloween Reawakened. Yeah. yeah, Halloween Reborn. Yeah, but yeah, Re- it's uh, repackaged for a new generation. Yeah, I mean, it's you know really sad, you know, seeing them both die. Um, yeah, people get you know ironic that uh, she was just in Rogue One as a CGI mm-hmm. double. Yeah, gives it you know um, a sadder meaning. Yeah, at the end. yeah, that really it was does. different. I was 
I think I saw it maybe a couple of days after. I saw Rogue One for like a fourth time after she passed away, and it was just sad at the end. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's it, it was really sad when you got to watch Rogue One and you got to see a CGI version of it anywhere, and then like you got the news right after. It kind right. of did suck. But yeah, no. Um, again, heart goes out to that mm-hmm. family because that that is heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, to uh, Todd Fisher and Billy Lord, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you see the? Uh, did you see her urn? Mm-hmm. Uh, Prozac. Uh, Prozac. It's a Prozac pill. Yeah, yeah, which is hilarious, but I also want to say that's kind of fucked up that paparazzi went Cosmet? over there and didn't yeah. contact that, that, that wasn't that wasn't for us. That was for her close family and, and friends. Yeah, you know, I, so that, that's fucked up. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to celebration to seeing what exactly they're going to do as like a ceremonial thing or anything like that, or if they're going to do anything at celebration yeah. to like kind of send off the. Princess. I, I would think they, I, they would have sure, to yeah. do something. I'm sure yeah. they will. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Do you think they're gonna have to rework? Uh, which they, they, they have, have to rework have to. episode. Nine. Well, uh, I would think like in some fashion, whether they rewrite something yeah. and just write out the character and give her send off in between eight and nine, or uh, they recast, which right. I actually okay think with. is the yeah. better thing. Because you know what, uh, Carrie Fisher was great, not just because she was Princess Leia. She was a big advocate for mental health, women's rights. Yeah, and um, I. I mean, at the end of the day, we don't really know, but I feel like she would want another actress of her age to have uh, that part available to them now. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, I think uh, a a recast is really good because, I mean, it's one of those things that we don't get to have Han and Luke and, like, the the trio come back. And I think if it's a real cop-out if we have this, you know, she died off camera. I mean, it's not just a cop-out, I think. Out of respect for the I understand actress, that. Too, yeah, no, you know? yeah, yeah, and and like, look at the decisions. Like, think what's going to look best in a hundred years when these movies are around. You know, if no, we don't yeah. get nuked by Trump and everyone, <laughs> then um, what's going to look best and is that, that it doesn't. We don't need to worry about nine. We'll, we'll never see it. Yeah. We'll never see it. <laughs> no, but uh, really, I think uh, a recast. It's not a simple recast. It's not, but it's a recast will look better in the long run. Okay. And Absolutely, I yeah. think that would honor yeah. the character more. I would say there would have to be something with uh, Leia because. Um, is that the Kylo Ren storyline has to have some sort mm-hmm. of reconciliation? Apparently, she has a very like a huge a part big in thing in, yeah. eight, in, in uh, eight, and then I think nine. nine she was it. also yeah. supposed to have a huge yeah. part too. Yeah, in you which would, you would think so. Uh, well, I mean, she that's has where huge, the confrontation between them she, supposed to happen. Yeah, she has a huge part in seven. If you watch the like the deleted scenes, she actually does have a good right. majority of scenes inside of seven. They just right, happen right. to get put on the chopping block and everything yeah. like and that. And those are the ones that were like modern Carrie Fisher, where she's like very sassy <laughs> yeah. and witty, and I was surprised that they cut those out. But uh, actually, I mean, uh, Abrams it, cuts movies for pacing, so well, I, I kind of get it. Not only that, but also if you watch those scenes and then you go back and read like, uh, which are Bloodlines, it mm-hmm. matches a lot with like Bloodlines, like her attitude and different stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. So, um, is it, I guess that's moving on. Um, any New Year's resolutions? Anyone? Uh, movie, movie related stuff? <laughs> I would love to watch uh, over 200 movies this year. Just like on a on a strictly film basis resolution, I'd okay. like to write a lot more. I felt okay. like new, I kind of went off a little bit. New movies or just... Uh, new movies. Okay. Yeah. New movies or at least movies that are new to me. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, which I'll, I I would like to very much enjoy a DC movie this year. <laughs> that is Don't my we all? That, that is my that's my New Year's resolution. Yeah. And we'll talk about DC movies in a second with yeah, our movie news. But that was I, I was hoping that that was going to be a good segue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, uh, I would really I would want to watch two hundred and one movies. Just to do more than me. <laughs> Just to be a dick. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to do two hundred and ten. <laughs> I'm going to overdo it. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I want to watch more movies. Um, then Diego, yeah, yeah, finish. Diego. You gotta finish. Me. Okay. You gotta finish. Yeah, just uh, watch crazy um, something I haven't seen before. You know what? Uh, the, the the I right before the end of the year, I ended up watching a movie that I fucking really regret watching, but also kind of don't. Uh, have you guys ever seen the Serbian film? No. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I ended up watching it. Uh, I was kind of tricked into watching it, more or less. And uh, yeah, I want to watch more of those. Is that like when our uh, like cohort Martin said, "Hey, you guys want to come over and watch a fun movie?" And then yeah, put on Old Boy. Yeah, Old Boy. yeah, kind of like that. Except for he, the, which uh, Galizi just gave it to me and was like, "Oh, watch it. It's really good." All and right, Galizi, was, if you listen to this, they're, you're fucking asshole. That's just not. And he what was you like, do oh, to someone. "No," and he was like, oh, "If you make it more than twenty minutes, I'll buy you lunch tomorrow." Jeez. And I was like, oh, right. uh, so I finished the movie, so you bought me Lynch. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I, I redact the fuck you. <laughs> uh, so let's just get straight into some movie news then. Mm-hmm. Um, first off, I actually want to get this one out of the way. It's a little out of order from our notes, Gene. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Emoji movie, 
<laughs> who cares? <laughs> no right? one needs to like, talk about it. It's no, just, the only thing I want to talk about is that on Letterboxd, where uh, I log all my movies that I watch, someone changed the name to Fuck the Pain Away. <laughs> <laughs> and no one's changed it back at the time of this recording. So the title for the Emoji the movie, movie on that app the pain is... Away. Uh-huh. That's awesome. I That's think, uh, which I, 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 I know that back when like the Lego movie was first coming out, we were all kind of going like, why? And, and it turned right. out to be... A, and then it's like the best movie ever. And it's, so it's it turned okay. out to be one of the best movies. I don't see that with the Emoji movie. No. I just no. don't. Although uh, Patrick Stewart is shit. voicing literal shit. He's a poop I, emoji. I, I, no, I get that. That's fine. I, I understand that's is there, funny. Is there, what's the tagline for that movie? I don't know. Fuck, the, have, pain fuck the pain away. Fuck the pain away. I'm going to go with that. It's fuck the pain away. They have, they have like a stupid tagline. It's a stupid tagline. Uh, a shout out to Joshua Maddock who changed it on Letterboxd and yeah. they haven't changed it back yet. Uh, I, I don't know why. <laughs> Because the letterbox even knows, yeah, that's a better title. Yeah. That's a better title. I like that title way more than. It's not. Be- oh, is it? Oh, okay. Oh, Here, just look it, look it up. We'll move on to the next yeah, bit yeah. of movie news. The important stuff. Uh, <laughs> the Power Rangers trailer. I loved it. Uh, I really liked it. Well, here, did you guys all relatively grow up liking Power Rangers, watching Power I Rangers? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Everyone did. Yeah. No, not everyone. I didn't. You I didn't? No, I just missed the train. I just never watched uh, it. Actually, uh, what was Make it? Make sure to say like Ninja Turtles you don't like either. I, I like Ninja Turtles. Okay. I don't not like it. I just didn't see it. There's <laughs> okay. fucking like, middle ground. I like, uh, which I've liked nin- uh, Power Rangers all the way up into, uh, shit, probably Galaxy. Like Lost Galaxy or like SPD or some shit like that. Oh. Like that's how far I watched mm. Power Rangers, and then I kind of jumped in between like episodes, mm. right? For other stuff. So I mean, Power there Rangers was is always pretty. Power good. Rangers, Power Rangers Turbo. Hey, listen, I cried when fucking Zordon died. All right. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. Zordon dies in the which he dies in space. Oh, okay. In Power Rangers I just space. remember uh, I the nothing. Power Rangers, yeah. the original movie with Ivan Ooze. Hey, man, that was apocalypse. a fucking, dude, apocalypse. fucking apocalypse was dope in that movie, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I have nothing against Power Rangers. Just you know, just missed the boat. And so the first trailer came out. I was like, oh, it's yeah. just Chronicle. It looks like they're trying to do Chronicle without doing Chronicle. Right. And then I watched the second trailer. The uh, the newest and, one. Yeah, and I was like, hey, this looks <clears throat> this looks good. One, looks interesting. The, the people that are the kids that are being superheroes, they look like they actually like being superheroes, which is a nice change of pace. Yeah. Um. They're also, then, they're also like kids the, with attitude. The jokes, <laughs> the jokes are like legitimately funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're talking about the Power Rangers trailer. Renee's head has come back from the stake. <laughs> she, had, uh, she killed you. You came back yeah, from the pike. Yeah, you I, came back yeah. from the pike. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, no, the Power Rangers trailer looked like legitimately funny when yeah. um. Oh, when he's he like, comes oh, in, he's are like, you like? Oh, they're looking at the different colors in the water. He's like, like oh, oh my God, I'm, I'm black. black. And he goes, No, you're not. <laughs> he goes, like, what? And he goes, Dude, come on. <laughs> yeah, like it's legitimately funny and exciting. And then the CG looks bad, but like everything else, yeah. I really liked. And Honestly, I, was like, I Whoa, think, I'm I, kind I, of excited for I, this I think now. The C- I think the CG will get better. I don't know about Goldar. Goldar looks really weird. Yeah, Goldar's mm-hmm. the only no, one Goldar was the only thing I was like, Oh, that's fucking weird. Yeah. Like I don't, I, I don't know why he looks like sand. He looks like a burnt <laughs> sand candle, and it's weird because he has like holes in him yeah. and stuff like that. And I was like, "What the fuck is going on with Goldar?" But besides that, everything else looks dope. The no, putties. you know what? I don't. I don't think the. Uh, I love the. I love the version of the putties where they're just like rock monsters. Yeah. That looks cool. Yeah. I love that idea. I don't think the CG will get better because I know this doesn't have that big but of a budget. It's Saban. And two, it's like, oh, I see why Pacific Rim fight scenes take place at night now, because CG looks way better at night. Uh-huh. Not oh, in lot, broad it's a, daylight. It's a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, it looks a lot better. Those suits. I'm actually really happy when you like even with the 200 million dollar budget. It's like I'm actually really happy that the suit. The suits actually look pretty good. I'm la- I'm I'm really happy. Oh, they look not, ridiculous. I kind of love it. I, I love yeah. the suits, and I, I better on screen. They do look. I yeah. that's what I was saying. The, they look way better on screen. Mm-hmm. Way fucking better on screen. Like I had no expectations for anything. So when people like were complaining about the suit looks on the pictures, mm-hmm. like when they first came out a couple months ago, I was like, I. They look ridiculous. And, you know what else looks uh, different? The, Z- I, the, Zords I like look, the Zords look better. So does Alpha 5. Alpha 5 looks way better on screen. And so does uh, Brian Cranston. Uh, is yeah. Alpha 5 the wait, robot? Wait, wait. Alpha 5 is the okay, robot. Yeah. Uh, that's Bill Hader, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bill yeah. Hader. Okay, yeah, that looks fun. And then uh, which are uh, Brian Cranston as like that. The little, Zordon. Like, yeah, what is, Zordon. explain Zordon for people who don't know. So anybody me. that doesn't know Zordon, Zordon is a is a, a warrior from a different uh, from a different universe where he fought against Rita and he was able to trap her away and that's how he gets trapped and he's like a head inside of a ball. Yeah. So like this little globe thing, and uh, the Power Rangers were uh, all defeated by Rita and that's the reason why like she was fucking trapped away and everything like that. And that's why as soon as Rita comes back, Zordon then decides to get you know five teens with attitude and i and, want the, and, the, and teen, turn them the most attitude, attitude. teens with attitude <laughs> then and and i love the idea that are, and i love the idea that these are all a bunch of fresh faces too i love the fact that there's not 
the only like big person like that's in this. The only two big people are really what Brian Cranston and uh, Elizabeth Banks. Elizabeth Banks. Those are the only really two big faces that are in this movie. And right. kind of, and I'm really okay with that. I'm like, you know what? Give me new fucking actors. I'm more yeah. than willing with to attitude. Have that. Yeah, with, with attitude, the fucking yeah. attitude, and I love it. I also like the idea that they mixed up the colors. Yeah, instead of giving, giving them their race colors, which yeah, was always really weird racist. and more. You think about it now in the nineties, like oh the. The the yellow was Asian. Yeah. The the, <laughs> the black dude was the black. And it was, yeah. it was no, really that weird. is good that they mixed it up for sure. That, yeah. that's yeah, that's that's I, good. I also really like the power coins. I like the fact that Rita has the green power coin for later on. To like fucking go like yeah, if we're gonna make a sequel, fucking we'll do the Green Ranger, green Ranger. later. Oh yeah, uh, I don't think it's gonna make money though. Like yeah. I I, you know I would what? be shocked. You, 90s kids. 90s kids, man. 90s we kids. come out. We come out, man. Yeah, but if that movie's good, only I'll 90s see it. kids remember the 90s. <laughs> Not that many of us. Dude, it's, it's fine. like only the 90s. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Yeah. dude, it's fine. If if the movie's good, I'll go see it three times. That's fine. Yeah. I'll go three at least three times. Yeah, no, if it's good, I want it to be successful. I just don't see that happening yet. I don't I I I I don't know what their what their range is, like what they're thinking they're gonna get. That's yeah, because be like this trailer looks like a uh like a summer movie, you know, like, that comes yeah. out in August that turned out to be good. And it's coming out. And the in first March. one felt like Chronicle, which Chronicle didn't make a lot of money. Isn't it coming out like March? They made enough, but uh, I have no idea. It's like, oh wait, no, July. It's coming out in July. It comes out July fifth. Yeah. If it comes out in March and you're saying July fifth, that's gonna be fucking hilarious. No, I'm. I'm I. Uh, it is July. No, it comes out March. Is it March? <laughs> yeah, it's. I guess where I saw I saw a poster the other day. No. If it came out in July, it would make no money. Then I for sure I'd be right. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, while well, you look that up, I'll, I'll look let's, up. let's, let's move up. on. Um. Uh, Black Adam is getting a spinoff movie as well as yeah. a regular movie for Shazam. Mm-hmm. Um, which is weird. All played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Uh, f- great, formidable, big blockbuster star. Yeah, I'm wrong. It was March 24th. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, I, I was right the first time. I was wrong the second time. Yeah. Okay. So you were in the right ballpark. Yeah. It's like Don't funny. underestimate it's like, yourself. No, uh, yeah, this is weird to me. Nick, you, you like this news, though, that Black Adam's getting a standalone movie I've, and... Well, no. Apparently, he's not going to be in the Shazam movie, but he's going to be in another DC, DC movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing the black. I I thought it was really interesting just because of the idea of you get to. It would be very interesting to have a movie where uh, the hero falls. Oh. Oh, yeah. Instead, if you uh, yeah. if you watch if you watch this movie and instead uh, and like you're really rooting for like black adam because in the in the original one he's a slave who be, who become who gets powers yeah uh which are from the wizard from the wizard shazam mm-hmm. and then he then starts fighting for good and then he starts uh going into the seven deadly sins and he starts uh which are feel, feeling greed and wanting to like control things and then he falls to the dark side basically and then uh the wizard shazam is forced to imprison him and I think that'd be a very interesting movie to kind of see, like, you know, his rise and you're really rooting for him and you're thinking, like, wow, this is a really good, like, this is a cool right. character. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, you know, see him fall and then later <clears throat> on kind of, like, be able to watch that and have that same connection of, like, I we saw this character as good. Now he's a villain kind of seeing, like, all the devastation he's doing. And that sounds pretty cool. My big issue is that... I make the Shazam movie, like, a sequel and kind of going, like, you know, continuing right after that. That'd be really cool. <laughs> I, my main issue is still that I think The Rock should be playing Shazam. Like, yeah, he looks physically like Black Adam. Like, put them side by side. They look his, exactly uh, like. It's his attitude. I don't care about his attitude that. Is, his uh, attitude is Shazam. Yeah. Like, he's funny. Like, love, like, did you guys watch Central Intelligence? It's like, it's an okay movie. It's cute, harmless. You guys ever watch Doom? <laughs> uh, Doom? No. no. Wow. I don't you even know where that came from. Doom? No, no, no. That's but, the, um, no, that's, what I'm, there, that's the only thing I'm afraid of is that it's going to be like Doom. God, that his no. villain, that his villain will be like Doom. Yeah, no, because we that's, know that's he problem. can be like he can pull off the villain thing for sure. But like even Central Intelligence, he carries that movie so well because he he's just like so like funny and charming and likable. Yeah, like I, he could he could do whatever. You I, know? I I really do like him like right. in general, and I I don't know any other like wrestler slash like bodybuilder that Dave Batista. Like, like he's the one. He's the he's like Hulk the Hogan. one other one. Hulk Hogan. I, Hulk Hogan had never had the likability. Never had the likability. <laughs> Like Hulk, Hulk Hogan is not that like. Okay. Let's be honest on this one. Dave Batista, yes, that that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That does make sense. Right. But uh, what was it? I I don't know. I don't know any other like big person because you you have to put these two hulking beasts right next to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I, I mean, uh, yeah, Black think? Adam's like interesting in the comics, but I, I don't know if he could carry a whole movie. And I feel like a lot of the DC people are like. Kind of copy and making paste. it up as they go. Well, no, maybe. Was, yeah, a little bit. Um, I was gonna say they're kind of copy and pasting like from Scorpion King. 
The uh, was it? Oh, the the mummy. The mummy idea. He's like, you know how he's like a villain in the Scorpion oh, King. Oh my then, god! The mummy, and then he's like in a spinoff in the Scorpion King, and they're just and the like, Scorpion That's King. He's funny. the hero, and he's you like hero. you root for him. Yeah, kind of seems like they're just copying that strategy i never considered that i but never fucking i didn't even think about that until you mentioned it wow I'm like, wow that's, that's actually really fucking close wow and they're kind of god similar. damn huh. fuck you just ruined that entire idea for me fuck yeah. you gene um yeah anyway. also uh so weird. along with this uh green lantern is it's happening right. or i mean all these movies are quote unquote go i don't they're think we're gonna go. see it's, half uh, of them yeah. which uh, did you hear what the idea for it is it's uh, lethal, it's lethal up in space. space yeah but that's been going around forever but no uh, uh, did you hear who the ter- who the two characters are john stewart, john stewart, john stewart, and stewart and yeah yeah that's been going around forever that's, that's not I'm new so, um but there was this cast from the rap that was or potential cast members from the rap that was revealed and honestly kind of reads like just fan cast to me like they're like oh ryan reynolds they might bring him back like he's not gonna no, come he's back. not gonna come back. He would his, never his contract is null and void now from right. the original one i was gonna say he's, he's deadpool. deadpool he's yeah. deadpool now he's not, not only <laughs> why does he care deadpool no. deadpool 2 could make half as much money as the first I'm deadpool s- and it would do better than like three green not lanterns only that, yeah. but also i'm assuming that inside of all of their contracts there's non-compete clauses inside of them so they can't jump yeah. from studio to studio yeah uh, that's, and then uh, that's it's thing. um yeah. who's yeah. rocket yeah. raccoon uh, Bradley, uh, Bradley Cooper. Cooper. I would, Bradley you know Cooper, what I really no, wanted? I, don't want I really either. wanted Bla- Bradley Cooper for Hot Jordan when the first Green Lantern. No, but the thing yeah. is that okay. So let's see. Let, he any, looks anybody like that's he has already, the attitude. Of anybody Hal that's Jordan. already in a Marvel movie, take them out. Yeah, they're, for, they're, they're immediately off the table. It, it reads like a fan cast. Yeah. But then uh, I forget what outlet reported. Uh, actually, James Marsden's also in contention. That'd that's fine. That, that makes sense. Like that feels like a legitimate choice because he's getting bigger because of Westworld too, and he's not part of the X Men movies anymore. Yeah. Uh, so you know, probably won't see him as Cyclops. I, I actually wouldn't mind the. Old, he was so underused. He would have been so great. I wouldn't mind the old casting that they had for uh, John Stewart for Common. Common. But he was in uh, Suicide was in, Squad. Oh, Jesus. Oh, like yeah, he was in Suicide yeah. Squad. He Fuck, that's dude. right. We I never totally really talked about that movie, but. Oh, that's right. The scene he he's in is like the was. worst he scene was. in the movie. Yeah. That's yeah. right, because he was yeah. supposed to be the tattooed man, uh-huh. and like he, he just, just had fucking, tattoos. He, was, he just had tattoos and like <laughs> yeah. a couple piercings. And you're going like, is that the tattooed man? And then like he fucking Joker doesn't. kills him in like yeah. five minutes. He was there. No, just the, Joker, to show the Joker. The Joker kills him after he, the Joker tries to get cucked. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. Yeah, it's that's a, a weird it's, fucking. It's a, it's a weird movie. fucking scene. Um, kind of prostitute Harley. Yeah, yeah it, it's fucking really that weird. movie. Um, <laughs> I think I think uh, he would do really well. You know, um, who is who, who is all, who is um, who's the dude from um, Fantastic? I mean, from uh, Fast from the Furious? Oh, movies? what's his name? Uh, Tyrese Gibson. Tyrese Gibson. No, kidding me. No, but he's been he's been petitioning he for yeah, it. Yeah, he's been petitioning for it. Doesn't mean yeah. he's gonna get it. What, what does he say? I don't, I don't he... think he he's a he's he's not the well, John Stewart hungry. type. I don't no. think he has that range. He's yeah. great at what he does, right? But I don't think that's that. What's what's his uh, what's his catchphrase in the? Are you serious right now? Are you serious? Yeah. Uh, or or uh, ejecto cedo, ejecto cedo, cuz. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, there's a lot of people that could play. I John want uh, Trevante Rhodes from Moonlight Ooh. to be John Stewart. I think okay. he's like. I just made that the perfect. What about, uh, sign. I like that. John Stewart from Comedy Central. <laughs> That'd be really that funny. was my first thought. I was like, wait, John, John Stewart? Stewart? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did you know fucking before would... the Daily Show, he was a justice of the Green Lantern? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you didn't know. That's how he got so good. That's how that movie would get money, get actual John Stewart in it. And people would be like, what the fuck? And go to watch that it. Would, and that's yeah. how they would get their money. That would be amazing. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, so, I, so these yeah. DC news bits. Okay, Odd. Um, I'm I'm okay with them. I just think that I I would like to see I like I would like to see a, a plan start forming. Mm-hmm. There will be none. I I, I would be astonished. Because the thing if, is, no, hear me out. I, I'll be astonished if they make movies past Aquaman. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing, though. Flash hasn't gotten a director yet. Flash, he's, no. Flash he's lost, isn't gonna happen. Anymore, he's lost three directors. It's already lost three directors. Yeah. Um, which uh, Cyborg hasn't gotten a director yet. So, oh, dude, Cyborg's never. I that was I, never gonna I happen. I don't see Cyborg never. happening. No. I don't. Sadly, I love sucks. the character. You know what I prefer? So against that. I would prefer Teen if Titans? Cyborg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it was a Teen Titans movie. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't think Cyborg belongs on this team. Yeah, because even in the in the short Comic Con trailer, you get him for like what half, thirty seconds for thirty seconds at most, and he doesn't I look you were great visually. No, not only, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I get real. like CG is going to be worked on longer, but even yeah. like stuff the images they're releasing now, it's images the they've best. had time to work it's, on. Yeah. It's yeah. not just that, but it's also why would I? I understand you. Okay, 
not to be like okay i gotta put a little bit of color inside of the like the team it's just a bunch of white dudes with like one <laughs> yeah. girl well i mean yeah. uh, jason like momo is jason like polynesian yeah. no 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 yeah, that's but, that's the one thing dc's gotten absolutely right is that they have a nice variety of color in their yeah. team they have yeah. you know what, a nice progressive superhero why team. not fucking do just john stewart then why wasn't why wasn't it drawn yeah. out no, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. just go well, straight actually, off you know what because of how how boring uh, the last Green Lantern movie was. I'm glad that wasn't John Stewart anymore. It's like, oh yeah, the white guy fucked up. Now, <laughs> there we go. Well, you know? the, but the thing is that a lot of people recognize John Stewart more than they the recognize cartoon. Hal Jordan yeah. because yeah. of the cartoons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the thing though, because when uh, what was it? When Ryan Reynolds. Green Lantern came out. The cartoons were still going on, and yeah. people were and very confused. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and people were very were going like, "Who's this Green Lantern? Like, what about like John Stewart? What about the Black Green Lantern?" And they would go like, "Oh, that's the second Green Lantern." Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, I think it's people like, oh. underestimate how big of an impact those those cartoons, cartoons did. Yeah, because yeah. and they influenced a lot of kids in the fucking mm-hmm. early two thousands who are yeah. now people who are buying tickets to go see they, this movie. Uh, they understood the Justice League better. Oh, yeah, dude, Bruce right. Tim, yeah. Bruce Tim, and fucking Paul Dini knew exactly what to do with the Justice League yeah. and Batman. Man, it's Superman. They knew exactly what to do. Yeah. But um, I don't. I, I yeah. I don't. I, nah. I, don't, I don't think Cyborg yeah. belongs there. So I, I don't like the new Fifty Two change in that. Yeah. No, you know why they they had him instead of Martian Manhunter because they're fucking boring. Yeah. Because that was when David Goyer was helping Zack Snyder like assemble this DC universe, and he he and then he talked shit about Martian Manhunter. Didn't he say like he was just he, like oh that's just ridiculous. Yeah. He was like, like, he's yeah. Just, like, like like oh, which I'm Mar- like yeah he's just he's just ridiculous like yeah. that's a ridiculous character. Like it's make like, whatever you, superhero movies you how you want to make them make them good. Yeah. But if you're someone who's like talking shit about the genre itself, like maybe just. Don't right. do that genre. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Go I, do something else. I think it would have been dope to have Martian Manhunter. It would have like, been great. Martian, uh, it's the simplest thing in the in the uh, which uh, inside of uh, the Bruce Tim uh, cartoon. Martian Manhunter is the one that assembles the team, right? Because he has tele he has uh, tele- uh, telepathic powers. Yeah, he assembles. Well, we're team. we're going to be talking a lot about. DC stuff it's, this year probably, but that, but that that makes sense though. Like a telepath fucking the, summons, the, uh, summons Jack all the Snyder heroes. doesn't make sense. Yeah, like, <laughs> stop trying to make sense. <laughs> I'm trying here, man. I'm trying to find some love in it, man. Well, uh, this story it doesn't make sense to me, but I'm excited. Uh, I a bunch of big outlets started reporting on it recently, but I first read it on Omega Underground. Uh, Eastern Promises, the, the David Cronenberg movie with Viggo Mortensen where he's a Russian hitman and assassinates a bunch of people in a bathroom naked. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> It's getting a sequel, and it's like, what the what? David Cronenberg's making a sequel? Like that just doesn't happen. The only movies that have he's had sequels to were directed by other people, and they're all terrible. Yeah. So I'm I don't know. It's it's just a small little story because it's like, where the fuck did this come from? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the director of The Fly and uh, a history of violence and Videodrome it, maybe is making a sequel. Re- maybe he just really liked the fucking property, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, he tried to make a sequel like back in 2010. And then uh, it never got off the ground, and people that weren't talking to each other are no longer even in business in the same vicinity anymore. So now it's happening, and I'm like, this is so weird. I'm really excited about see that. that. Yeah. So moving on to uh, pitch a movie. Yes, yeah, pitch a movie. Uh, we're bringing this back in a big way because it's Oscar season, and so for this episode, the next episode, we're gonna uh, pitch an Oscar bait movie. And actually, <laughs> who's even going for this? Oh, uh, I have one. Okay. Would yes. you like to go? Yeah, You'll sure. Go on uh, suggestions. Uh, which are Oscar bait movie? Yeah, they got to be sappy as balls. Sappy as balls. Uh huh. That's quoting Gene. Okay, I'm sappy as balls. Um, to be totally honest, uh, I was going to go- do a suggestion. Yeah, well, he's oh, okay. speaking. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I already have an idea. What's the? What are the other things? So that way, I can like actually like put it in. Was are you guys going to give me anything else? Uh, someone just... has AIDS. <laughs> someone has to have AIDS. Fucking crossing that bullshit. <laughs> Because Dolly Parton doesn't have AIDS. <laughs> uh, Why do they and have, have, and has to have Eddie Redmayne? Huh? And it has to have Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne's not the answer to everything, okay? No, he's not. Fantastic <laughs> Beasts and Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them learned that, okay? <laughs> that's like this that's one of the two movies I like him in. Really? Yeah. I actually thought Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was fucking boring. I think he was a boring lead, he's, to be honest. He's a boring he's, he's lead. He's not interesting, but I thought he was like fine. I just thought the movie was boring. Yeah. I, I didn't care. 
Just because you just because you drop Dumbledore's name a couple times doesn't mean I fucking care. Right. No, I agree with that. Yeah, that's yeah. like the worst part of the movie. Then uh, no, I think the worst part is when what Colin Farrell. Was. No, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's God. the worst part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. No, so part <laughs> of the movie. I was like, oh, oh my God! And then as soon as I saw Johnny Depp's face, I was oh, like, oh, weird. this movie got interesting. <laughs> no, this movie got fucking you. interesting. And then he's gone. So no, no, Does no. I want I want a final battle between it's that happen. Johnny Depp and a younger Dumbledore. Well, yeah. That's in the books. Yeah. And that's gonna be fucking hilarious. <laughs> I can't wait for that because they're gay for each other yeah, and they're yeah. gonna make out. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Where did that even come from? What? what uh, the author. Uh, oh, yeah. really? She confirmed. They, oh, okay. She confirmed that both. Oh, I thought of them you were just being no, like homophobic no, or something. No, 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 I was like, no. Grindelwald, Grindelwald and Dumbledore oh, okay. are like a thing. They're lovers. Oh, okay. They're oh, lovers. Then I apologize. Lovers. I think okay. uh, Dumbledore yeah. confirmed to be gay. I know my shit. No, Dumbledore was. I think like Grindelwald was just kind of using Dumbledore so he's, he's, yeah but I Dumbledore actually more... did fall in love with him and then yeah. that resulted in the death of Dumbledore's daughter I mean yeah. sister uh, sister, sister. Yeah. sister. Haha. Yeah. I know my Potter so. Oh, okay. Fuck you. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, AIDS, Eddie Redmayne, and Safi is balls. Okay, so, uh, All right, so we'll, we'll come back to that, Nick. No, it's mm-hmm. called uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find AIDS. Uh, it, has <laughs> wow. re- it has ready Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> no, 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 don't say yet, don't say yet, don't say yet. Okay, well, we're going to give you more time to <laughs> think of a better title and have, like... What, you can't, you can't have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find AIDS? That's no. not, that's not, no? I mean, okay. Right. Legally, um, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, um, so we're going to cut to that interview. Segment. Yeah, we're going to cut to an interview Gene did with Ted Raimi. Can I just yeah. put Nagonda N- or something no, like that? No, no. Uh, no. <laughs> and then uh, we'll be back in just a second. So hi, everyone. I'm uh, Gina Versa from Waffle Press. I'm here with Ted Raimi from Asher's Evil Dead, who also has played Hoffman in the Spider-Man franchise. That's right. And Jack, sir? Jack, sir, too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, just first off, Ted... Um, so, talking about the Evil Dead, I have yeah. a question for you. Go. So, uh, you're Ready. playing Chet. I love Chet. He's a great character. Thank you. Um, in your head, why didn't Chet go to the cabin in the original Evil Dead? Why didn't Chet go to the cabin? That's a really good question. Um, Chet didn't go to the cabin because Chet was back in Elk Grove slamming pink fucks. Okay. That's why he didn't go. He was too he hungover? He was too high. To remember to get in the car with everybody, including Ash and Cheryl and the gang. Gotcha. That's all. Uh, the Delta has been in all your movies, or sorry, all of your brother, all of your brother's movies. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, movie. right, correct. And it's uh, Sam's car originally, right? Uh, it is Sam Raimi's car originally. That's what, no, originally it belonged to uh, my mother, oh, okay. who uh, then um, allowed my then my father gave it to my brother, mm-hmm. and since it's been in every movie, yes, correct. Yeah. And when you were a kid, did you ever sneak sneak it, um, take it for a joyride or anything? Did I ever take it for a joyride? No, I never really cared about that. I was okay. I was really an insular guy, so uh-huh. I never did that. I would, I'm the kind of guy who would stay home and like watch Vincent Price movies and shit okay. like that. You know, I never, wasn't really um, I wasn't really like take a car out for a joyride. Yeah. Smoke a joint, <laughs> have a beer in the car. I do that now. Okay. Uh, but then I didn't do that. Now. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm just wondering. So cool. Thank you so much, Dan, for Thanks, joining Steve. us today. Thanks for having me on your podcast. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Me too. And we're back. Uh, now, Gosh. while Nick is working on his pitch movie, <laughs> we're going to talk about our favorite movies of 2016. Everyone around the table is going to pick one. Gene, would one. you like to go first? Yes. Yeah. I will go with uh, Rival, directed by uh, <sighs> Denis Villeneuve. Thank you. I could You're never welcome. pronounce his last name. <laughs> Worst first name. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I saw that. Um, I think I saw like a, a month before it came out, and uh, I was really, uh, really wowed by it. It's probably the most accurate film of uh, how First Contact will be, and um, it was very timely. It's a movie about communication, which uh, probably need more than that. Yeah. Than ever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, and it was the first. I think it was the first sci-fi film. What's his name? Did um, yeah, it was. he's going to do well. Blade? No enemy, no, no enemy psychological. No, Never mind. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if this is any indication how good Blade Runner will be, twenty uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, it's a pretty good indication. So um, yeah, Rival is just awesome. Yeah. yeah. Nick, would you like to go next? Yeah, sure. Uh, which I have to go with uh, Rogue One. Okay. Mm-hmm. As like uh, as my favorite for the year. Um, Rogue One really did, uh, it was the 
for a Star Wars uh, anthology movie, you know, it really it, it had a challenge of kind of going like these are what Star Wars movies are future. Are, this is the future of Star Wars. This is what right. we're probably going to be doing from now on. Mm-hmm. It's just anthology movies, and for a movie that didn't involve the main cast, you know, the cast that we've already grown to love and everything like that, it did great. It was able to get you into the mood get you into uh which are into the same feeling as star wars and give a shit and also expand the universe a lot more you know with all of like the with all of the episodes it only keeps it in maybe four or five people's like main stories right i like seeing these these universe expanding movies that help you know that this is a galaxy right you know this is a galaxy far far away instead of just you know the story of five people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and everything like yeah. that yeah, and I I like seeing other stories. You know, seeing the story of you know people, the other people that sacrifice their sell their lives for the to plans. for for the plans and everything like that. You know, these are the unsung heroes, and I love it. And I don't know why you're getting undressed because it's really yeah, weird. Also, I, <laughs> I was gonna say, like, uh, I was like, oh, did you like my thing that much? Like, he was like, yeah, dinner first, ba- he's like, yeah, <laughs> baby, tell it to me, yeah. No, I was also gonna say uh, how it portrayed the empire. Yeah, and it, it I, I love like, all the infighting. Actually, you know what? I, I love that because they mention that a lot in the books. In the books, yeah. they mention a lot of fucking infighting and, uh, and a lot of like what's trying the, to grab, trying to grab power. But also, what's the I, book's name again? Which one? The which book? There's a lot. The prequel oh, for oh, Rogue the, One. The, which are there's uh, Catalyst. Catalyst. Yeah, Catalyst. Catalyst is really great, and also the Rogue One book is really great okay. too. Uh, if you read Catalyst, it, Rogue One really does feel like a sequel to the book. Okay. It really does add a lot to the movie and stuff like that. Not necessarily needed, but it gives you a lot more information. You kind of give a shit about some of the characters that they didn't really dive too much into, like right. Saw Gerrera. Uh, which uh, are Galen or Galen, so, yeah. Cat, which are, uh, what was it, a couple other characters as well, including like uh, Galen's wife and stuff like that. Right, so. and she was supposed to be a Jedi. Uh, in the original script, yeah, she was going to be a yeah. Jedi. And then she, uh, in the book, they mentioned that she's, uh, which are, she's sensitive to the Force. So she can like feel that bad things are going to happen and mm-hmm. different stuff like that. And they and they were also going to mention the fact that like Jin also kind of has like that ability and stuff like that. Yeah. It's not as, you know, she's not, they're not as in tune right. and stuff like that. And, the, the, and it's really cool. I really liked Rogue One. Rogue One was really good. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually kind of glad that they didn't touch on that stuff in the movie because yeah. then it makes it feel like, oh, well, I'm just following more Jedi. That I force sensitive. Yeah, stuff, and you know? you know what? I I really am happy they did that inside the book. You know, they 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 talked about it in the book, and even inside the Rogue One novel that I was reading, they didn't mention the fact that she was a she was a uh, which a tune with the Force or anything like that. They didn't really make mention a whole lot about that stuff. All they really did mention was a lot more of like their family drama, yeah. where like you know, Jin actually fucking hates Galen and stuff like that, and it's it's really interesting. Right. It's Diego. a good book. It's a good book. If you guys yeah. I'll borrow it. What can I borrow? I got it on Amazon. I got it Audible. So uh, <laughs> if, uh, I, I don't know. You can't borrow my Amazon account because oh. I buy things on that. <laughs> okay. All right. uh, Emma? Uh, my 2016 movie, it would have to be The Accountant, mm. which it kind of snuck. I actually really like that movie. I like The Accountant. Like it movie. snuck under the radar. Diego didn't like it. No, like, I didn't like it. But I'm not like going to talk shit. Go ahead. It's your favorite. It's just because... <laughs> Like it gave no, do it. It, it, <laughs> what are, what are it it gave a light to um to autism and to mental illness yeah. in such a broad way, which in in the one way it sucks because you had someone who's not autistic play someone who is autistic. But in that same way, if you made that movie with someone who was autistic but didn't have Ben Affleck's name, right. it, it would no not one, have it would no not one have, seen it. no one would have seen it. But I just thought like I rented it a couple months ago. And it just, it blew me away. I did not expect to like it as much as I did. I also yeah. feel you wouldn't have gotten the same performance. No. Because Ben Affleck does a really great performance. Right. Oh, I don't know about job. that. I think no. you could easily cast someone who's better. You know what? Than, I, than honestly, I think, I, I, I actually really do appreciate what Ben Affleck did. Like, Ben Affleck actually, like, spent a lot of time, like, with, researching like, and researching. Yeah. He yeah. spent was, a lot of time yeah. trying to figure out, like, little tiny ticks. Yeah. yeah. He had a lot that. of... No, the, I think that stuff's handled respectfully, for sure. I yeah. And I, 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 I wasn't that enthralled with it. That's all. fair. So you know, really, that's fair. Yeah. I, I do like it. I think, I think it'd be... I thought it was very interesting. The only mm-hmm. thing I didn't like about the movie was the fact that it was very much like, and wait until the sequel. Yeah. I was going to say the ending. The ending is a little bit open-ended. 
ended. It's very but much like it, waiting to the sequel. Yeah, yeah it was open ended, but it, he left his relationships with the people in the movie at such a satisfying place. Yeah. Where if they did a sequel with new people, you would be like, okay, this kind of makes sense. Right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, which I think everybody, I think everybody kind of did a good job in that movie yeah. too. Yeah. I actually yeah. really did appreciate that movie altogether, and I, I like Batman the, fight Punisher. Yeah, yeah and it, exactly. You, to, you, you, had, you had to see Batman fight Punisher, and I remember laughing when we went to go see it because we got to go see an early showing of it, and mm -hmm. that was that was it was just a really good movie. Like after we came out, I was kind of like, I kind of wish I would have paid for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of getting instead of getting like a, a which a, a screener, I was like, oh, I kind of wish I would have paid for that. Yeah, I like that. Um, I like that a lot. Yeah, I was gonna say it's also uh, it was cool to see uh, people uh, his like. Uh, disability kind of treated as a superpower yeah you know? yeah I, I i think that's really interesting in the way that they did that where they were going where like people would be amazed at the things he could do with yeah. like especially with numbers and you know mm -hmm. accountability and stuff like that and then also the fact that they were like yeah he focuses really good that makes him a really good marksman yeah. Yeah. like yeah. he's really good with guns because of that and like he becomes a very dangerous guy mm -hmm. and i do actually like the idea of you know he he does come from a broken home and he comes from and like he he grew up with a father that was very protective of him mm -hmm. and he felt like the military would really mm -hmm. you know make him a man and stuff like that yeah. and he which his father i mean he's not wrong it did kind of turn him into like the guy he is today yeah. and stuff like that but also it's kind of like also sh seeing like how like his misguidedness and seeing like where the father like kind of put him in the situation yeah. and stuff like that i think with his father it showed it showed him trying to treat his son without uh, without a disability, without the without autism, but at the same time, when he would have his moments, like in in the scene with his mom, yeah. and he's having a breakdown, his father just his father doesn't yell at him about it. He immediately gets him on a path that he recognizes to calm yeah. him down. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like treat treat it like the black sheep of the family. Exactly, right? and I, I I really did like that. I also really liked the callback to to the uh, what was it to the asylum or not the asylum the institute. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. institute where like the where the guy goes like where why does she need such a like high tech computer? Yeah, like, I love that. Like that doesn't make any sense. Why does she have such a high tech computer and stuff yeah. like that? Like you could break into the Pentagon with that. Yeah. And then yeah. she and then the guy's like, oh no, she she just uses it for certain things. And at the very end, I was like, oh, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah she you're was like, like the Oracle. Yeah, like yeah. she was his Oracle. Yeah. That make that's really cool. I like that. Like oh, yeah. So was, if, they, if he ever makes a Batman movie, that's his Robin. That's his Robin. Exactly. That's his Robin. Perfect. Yeah. I, I I love that and. Um, uh, what was it? Yeah, I, I do agree with that. That was a really good movie. I liked yeah. it a lot. Yeah. Diego? Yeah. Uh, Kubo and the Two Strings, hands down. I think no movie sure. came close to me. You know what? I thought you were going to go with Moana. I really thought you were going to go with Moana. No, Moana grew on me a lot. And I liked mm -hmm. it a lot when I first saw it. But now I'm just like seeing it. I downloaded all the songs. <laughs> all it's, of them. It's, it's, it's so it good. A, it has a really good soundtrack. It has an incredible soundtrack. How is Kubo? I haven't uh, seen it yet. Kubo and the Two Strings is a fantastic movie for a lot of reasons. It's beautifully shot. It's animated gorgeously. Uh, say, it has these really rich, beautiful themes about overcoming grief mm -hmm. and loss and how What's these the... are all essential parts of being human because while it can hurt, um, it doesn't take away from the good things that the... you spend time What's with What's the people. plot of the movie again? Yeah. Uh, a young, it's Zelda. It's a Legend of Zelda <laughs> game that's an hour and a half long. No, um, Thank you for telling me that. Yeah, okay. yeah you're welcome. No, uh, it's about I'm less interested uh, now. a boy. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, because it's not that complex of a story, but it's very good at telling its specific okay. story. Uh, it's about a boy who is in hiding from this villainous moon king, and uh, the it's moon king wants Zelda. his eye. Yeah, And so uh, he goes on a quest to vanquish the this thing. Beast? Uh, well, the Moon King and um, thing. like I, it's kind of hard not to like discuss Spoiler. in detail because it, it, it by it? discussing things, it kind of spoils it. Yeah, I, it's I, not that there's twists and turns. I mean, they're there, but it's just uh, like mm -hmm. when you watch it, I'll it's, watch, it's I'll, way better than I'll when watch you, it on my next explain. T Mobile Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah. 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 I, I'll watch I was, it on my uh, next T Mobile Tuesday. <laughs> I, I was very touched by this movie yeah. in, in, in a big way. Yeah, I think hands down, this is like my favorite movie. Right. It, it, well, going to be one of my favorite movies for a long time. I, I, like, mm -hmm. I dig that. I dig yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, now I want to talk about some of our most anticipated movies before we go back to uh, Nick with his pitch a movie. There's, I, I'm, I'm undecided of whether or not the main character should get raped. Oh um, my god. Oh my god. <laughs> That's... They need to get AIDS somehow, guys. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can get it platonically, you psychopath. You can get it. Uh, anyways, you said way. sappy. <sighs> Yeah, you know what? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, didn't learn how to cap We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, she gets it from a bear. Wow. 
<laughs> so our most anticipated movies of 2017. There's a lot coming out this year. We're just looking over during the break right now. And we're like, oh my god, there's a lot. Yeah, there is yeah. a lot. Uh, I don't even know where to start, so I'm going to toss it to Gene, obviously. Right. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Kong, Skull Island. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I didn't didn't like Godzilla. It's because John, John Goodman's in it. Uh. Well, no, um, yeah, I didn't like, well, I guess they're calling it the MonsterVerse. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Um, and, uh, you know, the Godzilla movie is kind of iffy about, but Kong looks really good. Um, Kong looks like you actually get to see the fucking animal. Yeah, you get yeah. to see you get to see the monsters. Wow, you it's get almost like there was a point to that. In the movie. Actually, yeah. There's an actual shot of the actual beast. Yeah, he's not behind a building or in smoke or underwater. Or, or the doors, behind, that or, is or the, the worst doors nitpick. Closed. You guys gotta go. Door, all right, all right. I'm gonna stop busting your balls about it. But uh, Kong, you know, I didn't Kong, make the movie, Gene. Well, you like it so much. <laughs> yeah, I do. Because I have taste. It's okay, Gareth no. Edwards made up for it with Rogue One. Really, yeah. Oh my god. All right. Um, so Kong is like, it's really cool that it's in the Vietnam War. I do dig that. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Vietnam War era film. Um, there's a cool aesthetic. Uh, also, you know, for all the remakes for Kong and all the movies and sequels, it's always like the same story. Um, it seems like, you know, they just take him back to New York and, you know, you see the same, same thing over and over again. And he's always hung up on the same girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, this one, you know, it's like an expedition team going to Skull Island, uh, you know, to, you know, find him and like, you know, do whatever. Um, and it just takes place on the island as opposed to, you know, the the whole beauty and the beast thing, which is, you know, it's good, but like, it's. You know, you've seen that already so many times. The other thing I really liked uh, I liked about it was that it, it doesn't really paint Kong as the bad guy. Yeah, I yeah. mean, well, he's more in, benevolent. In any of the Kong movies, he's not the bad yeah. guy. But I mean, I, I, I like the idea that the humans are very much the bad guy in this That's situation. That's all the Kong. Where, I mean, if there's any, like, through line constant yeah, for the it's Kong like, movies, yeah, is that the humans are the bad yeah. guys. Because yeah, King Kong is an allegory for slavery. Yeah, and I, I really do like the idea that, which all, all he's doing is he, he's protecting his island. Yeah, like you've invaded, Yeah, you've invaded my territory. Right. That's the that's why I'm attacking. And yeah. that's, and like, when they shoot him and everything like that, now you've just started a war. Right. That you know a giant ape will finish, mm-hmm. so that's kind of cool. I yeah. like that. I really yeah. do. You know, it's uh, seems like it's also setting up for when him and Godzilla meet with all the monarch stuff that's in the background. My only thing with uh, him battling Godzilla is he has he has like laser breath. I don't, uh, I'm not entirely too sure how it, King Kong's gonna fight. Well, that. I mean the the breath it seemed well his like atomic breath was like a very. Um, like a defense mechanism for him that he yeah uses when sparingly. when you fight you gotta defend well no I was gonna say <laughs> no like, no I I mean I'm busting your balls right now Gene but uh, I mean this he, he's faster than Godzilla I I get that I I do get that I just I, well, I feel no, like the, I mean the the atomic breath he only used for a certain you know purpose like he does he could only like use to it. kill something that's attacking well, him well he could only use it like for a finite amount it seemed like in the first you mean if he's battling like, one animal. Yeah, well, I mean, like, when he used it, he couldn't use it for, you know, a good, like, couple of minutes, you know. The, the main the thing power. is, I was I was wondering yeah, if... Like, was, are, you, are you talking about it charging up? Yeah, yeah the charge, he had yeah. the power. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, but I, I, I'm wondering if they were going to, like, beef up, like, King Kong. Kong. Yeah, like, they did. Like, he's bigger than any other Kong. Well, I, th- I I was wondering if whether or not, like, they were going to give his ass, like, fire breath or some shit uh, like that. No, because <laughs> like, no, then that's um, the same, same did you see, uh, tactics. Did you see the original boring. King Kong versus Godzilla? They give him, like, a superpower. It's like electricity. Yeah, that's why I'm, that's why yeah, I'm like, wondering if yeah, whether but, or not... Yeah, but, I mean, that's not a good movie. It's a fun movie, but yeah. it's, like, not I mean, but that's good. dumb. You gotta why, even... Why yeah. have you have to even out the yeah, fight Yeah, but then somehow. it's just dumb. Okay. DVS is not even... Yeah, yeah. Batman versus Superman. Super fucking even. What are you talking about? Fucking Kryptonite Arrow. Come on. Yeah. Yep. Oh but God. that's 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 mine. Okay. Yeah. Nick. Um, I'm a huge Star Wars geek, so I'm gonna go with uh, episode se- uh, episode eight. eight. Which hasn't been named yet. Yeah, has has not been a- named yet, and everything For like some that. Reason. Yeah, uh, they're gonna. Ca- it's probably gonna come out with uh, celebration. But mm-hmm. for a movie that I know more about, I would go with um, what was it Kingsman? Kingsman. Mm-hmm. The Kingsman. Yeah. Circle? I. The Golden Circle, yeah. yeah. Golden Circle. And uh what was it? John Wick too. Those are You're just supposed to pick one, man. Come Listen, on. Listen, buddy, this is gonna be a good <laughs> year, all right? And I don't know that much about Star Wars, all right? Nobody it's... does. That's the beauty of it right yeah, now. Yeah, that's the greatest uh, part. Yeah. Uh Emma. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Alien Covenant for multiple reasons. One of them being it comes out on my birthday. Happy which... birthday. Thank you. Yay. Um it's an aliens movie, and I have loved them since I first seen the oh, first you're gonna fit alien so well ever. Here. I yeah, uh, I don't yeah. think anybody really loves the aliens. I mean, they just like 
You well, know. I mean, I would can start a relationship an old <laughs> you can it's just yeah. like not by one person's choice and that's yeah. <laughs> one uh, side's more rapey than the other yeah true yes. but um they're bringing aliens back it's not like prometheus <laughs> um it's not it doesn't look like some campy wait you didn't like old... prometheus come on <laughs> You're like the big white dude that just like honking around? The weird just guy? No. Giant, just white hulk? <laughs> um, <laughs> it has Michael Fassbender in it, which, un- unlike Prometheus, you can't go wrong with it because mm-hmm. he went wrong in Prometheus. But, I don't know. Um, I was really confused. Well, hey, no, that. no. I would say that the like he the legitimately like the great point. part of Prometheus was Michael Fassbender. <laughs> the, like, better, the first the better minutes parts was were, just him? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, the better parts were with Michael Fassbender, except for when he was head, when he had only like a head. Yeah. That yeah. was a little bit weird. Yeah. But it's finally... The aliens, the xenomorphs are finally coming back on the screen. And if you watch that trailer without getting scared, without getting chills, without getting super excited about seeing them again, then I don't know what to tell you. Because I watched that trailer about five times the first time it came out, the Red Band trailer. Mm -hmm. It's insane how awesome it looks. It came out Christmas Eve, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was was at a gift exchange with my family. (laughs) And I was was like, oh, I got to step away for this. They're playing White (laughs) Elephant. And then I watched it with the sound off. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> that was amazing. shower scene at the end yeah. oh it's so good awesome. the one thing I really do like about it is I feel like it's much more it's going much more towards the horror like the survival uh-huh. horror yeah. aspect uh-huh. and less it's towards yeah. the action adventure yeah. Yeah. towards an action movie and I think that's that that's something they they need to get back to where their where their origins uh-huh. were. You know they 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 ventured f- too far into this. But they still adventure. they still need yeah. to do different stuff with it. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it shouldn't I be agree. action adventure, and because admittedly, like the. From what we can assemble of the plot, the story, it looks pretty familiar. But the best alien movies always deal with like existential Lovecraftian yeah. dread, yep. and then really schlocky horror kills. Because mm-hmm. yeah. like the the kills are just like don't, yeah, don't just slasher horror I, movies. Don't get me wrong, so. I love those. But the I I remember watching Aliens two when I was a kid. You mean Aliens? Yeah, Aliens. <laughs> okay, I remember watching Aliens, and I remember that scene where uh, which author they they set up all the turrets, and it's very it, it's very like horde mode, mm-hmm. and you're just like waiting for these. For oh, from come. the director's cut. Yeah, and that then just like, like kills aliens. Yeah, and then you're, and then you just see, and then you see them like look into the vents, and you just see this like wave of fucking aliens coming. Going, and I remember being a kid, going like, "Oh, these guys are dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're dead. Yeah. Like that's this is the end of the movie." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even with a, a simple tagline of just run. That, that's yeah. a great that's fucking the best tagline. tagline. Yeah. It's, it's it's not on the same level, but it's almost as good as the first alien tagline, which is in space no one can hear you scream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's which just is a, phenomenal. That's a that's a great fucking tagline. Yeah, because yeah. everyone knows, like, oh yeah, Xenomorphs. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna it. get your shit fucked up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who's played uh, Isolation knows yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Isolation. Run, run and hide. Run and hide because there's nothing you can do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. nothing you can do. And it's that it's that moment when you get a tail through the chest. Yep. You're always upset. Yeah. Oh, that, that game's fucking hard. Yeah, it is. Yeah. When, and you haven't saved in like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, well. And you finally reach the goal you want, and then you just get that. And yeah. then you're like, through. you know what? I don't even want to play anymore. Yeah, let me take <laughs> a break wanna, right now. Fuck yeah. this game. Yeah, I'm going to play it in three months. Yeah, um, yeah, I think my most anticipated, actually, uh, just because it's, it's going to be so fucking weird. Uh, Thor Ragnarok, which yeah. I never yeah. thought I'd ever say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a very interesting uh, movie. Taika Waititi made a comedy masterpiece with What We Do in the Shadows. Hunt mm-hmm. for the Wolder And then he made Hunt for the Wolder Fever, which is just it. as good. Yeah, it's like up, but like I get more, more intense? mature. No, no, no. Okay. Not, I wouldn't say intense, but more like for older audiences. Okay. okay. You know, a, a kid, I would still let kids watch it, but it's... It's a little harder. Watch it first. Yeah, watch, watch up first and yeah. then watch Hunt for the Old People. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's really emotionally mature. He knows how to balance action. There's like a surprisingly well amount of uh, well-directed action to Hunt for the Wilder People. Mm-hmm. And As uh, Sam s- Neill. Oh, uh, Sam Neill, which is, just makes it objectively the best movie ever. Yeah. Um, and the like, what we've heard from Thor Ragnarok is like so weird. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he goes to space. Uh, he exiled loses, into space. He yeah. exiled. He loses Mjolnir, so he has no Mjolnir. He has to fight the yeah. Hulk. Yeah. yeah. Gladiator yeah. match. Mm-hmm. His meow meow. Uh, and yeah. then uh, Jeff and, Goldblum holds over him yeah. in, in the no, stadium. And there's no Darcy. And then, ah, uh, Gene, stop talking forever. There's no Darcy. Because like, yeah, no I know annoying. you're going to go on and on about it. No you gotta, characters. You got to stop. Okay. And then, um, you think there's no Darcy. They'll fit her in. <laughs> I, 
I hope they fit her in I just hope they for you, Gene. Yeah. 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 Just to you. Because know, you know what, Gene? I'm not going to lie. Those scenes don't bother me as much as they bother you. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think they're funny. I, I, think, I think they're funny. Yeah. I, like I think her. they're fine. Yeah. And you know what? Oh. I hope that she f- that he's able to fucking contact Earth to let them know that he's on <laughs> this Darcy planet in this movie. and yeah. Darcy fucking <laughs> answers that she is now working at Stark Industries <laughs> and she answers the fucking oh thing and goes, where's Meow Meow? Yes. Just for you, Gene. Because you don't shut the fuck up about it. Um, Anyways, I think Thor Ragnarok sounds super weird. Mm -hmm. It's got Doctor Strange thrown in there at one point. Yeah, Yeah. Doctor Strange. Yeah, Yeah. 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 if if that's a spoiler, it's several months after Marvel movie. It's it's fair game now. Well, I was gonna say, you know, if you've seen Doctor Strange, you know he's gonna be in Thor. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I just said like if you haven't seen that. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if they're just gonna copy that same scene. Like if that scene's gonna be (laughs) like that's the Doctor Strange scene in Thor. Oh well, yeah, that's what they did for Civil War, Ant Man. That's true. That scene is just that's a true. Civil War clip. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's like oh, a minute long true. tops. It, it's it, not. Yeah, it, so it, I'm okay yeah, with that. It doesn't it could, give out too much, but yeah. it's still. It, so it's out. not really like a post credit scene. It's just like, oh, here's a clip from the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like just to get you, just mm-hmm. just get you ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's, here's a scene. Yeah, um, but no, I think it sounds wicked. And then Kate Blanchett's the villain, which means it's going to be the best Marvel villain. Nice. Man, I feel really What's bad. Your, I feel really bad. How do you pronounce Hella. it? Hella. Hella, yeah. I, 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 I'm a huge DC fan and fucking... Mm-hmm. I guess so fierce. Justice too. League and Wonder Woman come out next year. I mean, yeah. this year. And oh, I'm, I've heard not great things about Wonder Woman. And I am like... Uh, that's what not, I'm afraid of. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not really being scared. Good. I'm excited. I, I don't know. Scared for Wonder have you heard I, anything about I've, Wonder Woman? I've heard a couple of things. You know, there was like a leaked... It was its own working on the film made like a manifesto about like why the DC properties are bad and then he cited like Wonder Woman. That and was last year. Yeah, that was and last year. And then everyone the kind last, of blew it off. That was the last thing I heard well, the, about uh, which criticism. Thought, uh, apparently from what but I've been the, hearing... then the director was like, yeah, that's not true. From from Apparently from oh. what I've been hearing is that it's having the same editorial problems from uh, BVS where like uh, it, it's very disconjointed. You yeah. Know, uh, st- yeah. Plot lines are kind of... They, they blew off that letter. Okay. And then I don't know if that letter was actually like ever verified, but... More stuff's coming out where it's like, yeah, we're kind of having a lot like, of trouble with mm-hmm. Wonder Woman. Like people, right now. like people, like people who are going in for like test screenings and everything like that. They're not very enthused. They're they're very like. I don't know if they. I don't know if they test screened it yet. People, which are, I've heard of the, a couple of people have already seen the movie. Like people wow. have seen the movie. Like mm-hmm. they've already they. There's a finished yeah, version yeah. of the movie, and people have seen it, and they're not, they're not very pleased. Yeah. Like they're, they're they're and they're saying that it has the same problems that BVS does. So. Yeah. And then Justice League, I'm not even gonna play because yeah. I like why am I gonna do that to myself? I'm actually uh, excited for that. I, I wish I, I, was. I, I, I just want to see it. I, I have such a like hopeful ignorance, I would say, <laughs> about Justice League because yeah. just want to be- see if you can do it. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> yeah, but I like I'm excited for the Flash mostly. Right. Okay. Because a I like Ezra Miller. He's a great fluid actor. Me too. And b his little clips of the Flash seem to seem to combine. A, a different amount of Flash slash Flash characters together, mm-hmm. where he looks like he'll be like the good part of. That's the thing, Justice though. Is League. I feel I, I feel like the Flash movie would be great. Yeah, Not, he just. But I I don't think you can put like all the humor on one character and right. be like, no. and like this is gonna be our character who has all of the character yeah, to him, and yeah. like he has like he has all like the funniness. Well, I will say this like before we go on to a uh, pitch a movie, so we can hear your stuff, or yeah. actually an interview segment, and then we'll pitch a movie. Yeah. yeah. Um. I will. I bet it's not going to be all Zack Snyder like messing up this time because I do fully put BVS on him, regardless mm-hmm. of production issues. Yeah. Honestly, I think he was wrongheaded about how he went about that movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think now it's, it's going to be yeah. everyone doing like, oh, you got to have, you got to do this here, you got to do this here. People didn't like this and did this in BVS. It's yeah. a board. Got to do it here. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a movie that was made in the boardroom. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. and that's and you and you can really fucking feel it. Right. Mm-hmm. Really and you can do it. that if you have a boardroom like that the MCU it, or Lucasfilm. What's so. going on and stuff like that, and but the thing is that the the boardroom that they make up for the uh, which are the MCU and also for uh, what was it Lucasfilm are all made of the top creatives, right. yeah. people who have worked on the properties, yeah. mm-hmm. fucking Dave Filoni or uh, what was it, different people that understand, yeah, like, people that yeah. are understanding understand the like the these these characters and they understand the world and they're going like okay, this is how we're gonna yeah. make this movie mm-hmm. and yeah. that's. Mm-hmm. That's why the boardroom works. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. uh, now we're going to cut to a quick interview segment with Kevin Conroy. Speaking of Batman. Yeah. <laughs> That's a segue right there. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to come back and Nixon to finish his pitch real quick. Yeah. I just got the Batman uh, pop for Kevin Conroy. Animated series. It's I hate beautiful. you. You ruined a perfectly good segue. You fucking damn. We're going to a clip. <laughs> this is Gina Versa. I'm here at the Long Beach Comic Con. 
I'm here with Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. How you doing, Kevin? Great. How's you? How are you doing? Doing really good. Really good. Um, Kevin, just jumping right into it. Um, when you started Batman the animated series, when you got hired, I remember uh, an interview where you said, um, you know, you you, uh, you didn't you didn't think it would uh, like last as long as it did. You know, you've been voicing the character for 20 years. Well, when you get a show, you never know right. what's going to happen. And I think all of us were shocked at the quality of the show, the artwork, um, the fact that they used a full symphony score, uh, such a big cast of actors. Um, everything was hand-painted. They, they, they doubled the budget of what had previously been spent per half hour. And it showed in the, in the, in the production values. And I think all of us were amazed when we saw uh, what it looked like. How, how beautiful it was and how epic it was. Um, so I think everyone was really surprised. You don't realize you're a part of something that's going to become iconic until afterwards, until you look back in hindsight. When you're creating it, you're just doing a job. You know, you're just doing the day-to-day -day work of doing the job. And working for Bruce Tim and Paul Dini and Andrea Romano, Alan Burnett, they were some of the best people in the business, and this is when they were all just starting out. So, you know, people were just getting to know them too, you know? So, yeah, it was just, it was such a lucky moment for me to happen to be in the room with those people when they were putting all this together. Between your gears here, it was uh, Batman Day recently, uh, yesterday. Um, and I can't think of any other yeah. superhero that has like a whole day devoted to no, him. But what, what do you think like resonates so much with people that you know they love the character so much? Or I think Batman has has lasted for seventy five years and it's still the most popular uh, franchise out of Hollywood because he's a mortal human being. He's not a superhero. He has no superpowers. He's just a man who had a horrible tragedy happen to him as a child. And instead of becoming evil, he chose to become the embodiment of good. And he doesn't want any attention for it. He doesn't want anyone to know what he's doing. He does it all behind a mask. And he just wants to service people and take care of people. That's an incredibly um, noble impulse to have. And I think all of us fantasize that we have an element of nobility in ourselves. Everyone wants to be a part of something greater than, than themselves. And Batman gives people that opportunity. They, 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 through him, they get to vicariously be greater than themselves. And, you know, they relate so much to him, you know. Yeah. And we're back. We're running a little short on time right now. So, Nick, you got three minutes. Three minutes. Right. To pitch your sappy... Uh, Academy Award winning movie. All Nick right, and... All right, go. No. Okay, uh, I didn't get a chance to like actually like give them names or anything like that, so I'm just going to give you guys the plot. Um, the plot is that there is a small African child who is born inside of a very poor uh, South African village. And when he is born, he, which uh, his uh, father is already dead, and his mother dies uh, which are in, uh, which are on the operating table uh, giving birth. And when he is born, he already has AIDS. Um, what was it? As the boy gets older and he's inside this village, they end up finding out that he uh, he has a very strong talent towards uh, the violin. Uh, they the actual the entire village gets together uh, very much so that they're gonna start raising money so that way they can send him away so that way he can actually join Juilliard and everything like that. Um, while uh, they end up getting the money, they send him to Juilliard, and it's very much a struggle between him like dealing with his you know dealing with his past and uh, which are trying to like build get money and everything like that. And eventually he ends up joining the, the Philharmonic and everything like that. And after he finally does, he dies. That's, what that, that's, that's the movie? <laughs> that's, that's how the movie ends. Is, wow, him, is, him uh... on his, is him on his deathbed. And, uh, which are, and he's, he's happy that he was actually able to do, he was actually able to make it to his life goal. Okay. okay. And he's born with AIDS? And he's born with AIDS. Okay. That's why I, that's why I went to South Africa. Do you, have a, do you have a title for that? Uh, right, the title will make everyone or break has this. AIDS. When people, <laughs> when people blindly vote for this, the the old white academy members, there's the title that's going to sell it. So yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah. It needs to be like collateral beauty. Collateral beauty. <laughs> collateral. 
Uh, was, <laughs> Collateral booty. <laughs> I was going to call it Swifting Tones. Swifting Tones. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, that, that'll probably get in a light yeah. match attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll green light that. And I want to win some Academy Awards for I this know. industry. I know what white people want. <laughs> <laughs> Gene? Uh, you know what? I you said won. you said fucking sappy. You said sappy. Kid dies I, with I no parents. I won't because I wanted sappy, not... De- fucking depressing. Yeah, that's same what, fucking thing. Yeah. No, yeah. there's a difference between sap and depression. No, there's like saccharine. I feel like, and then there's no, like it's depressing. The same I don't thing. Know. Dude. It feels like nihilistic. Yeah, that's the, kind of what you asked for. Sappy no. it doesn't it isn't inherently feel good. It's just like emotionally manipulative. Yeah. Okay. That is very. That's a manipulative ass movie you just talked about. Because <laughs> you don't know he's gonna die. Yeah. He, I don't know. he just went to like the dude. lowest common denominator of like, like people yeah, who but, suffer from white guilt, <laughs> yeah, and like want to feel better about themselves without so actually doing anything. They, they so they'll just vote for it, though. Uh, yeah, because you're like aware yeah. of like actually like you can, you you know that that's a bullshit movie just yeah. made to like manipulate win an you. Oscar. Yeah, it's manipulated. It doesn't to win care an Oscar. about the actual politics of the movie right. and the story. Okay. He just cares about the politics of the Oscars. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like radio or something? Yeah, like radio. Listen, you told me to win a fucking Oscar here. I'm giving you a movie that'll win a fucking Oscar, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course be- it's problematic. It's got issues. <laughs> or, or it could be collateral beauty. It's either yeah. collateral beauty, beauty or, or uh, like the Danish girl. Okay. Yeah. Which are both, of All right. course. You know what? I'll take those yeah. chances. Nah. Like screen with it. There you yeah. go. Yeah. What about you? Um, I'd green light it. <laughs> Mainly because every year there needs to be a movie that just makes people cry. Yeah. <laughs> like and this year, I think it's going to be A Dog's Purpose. Like the next Marley and yeah. Me, it's just, it's made to make my, you cry. And my that's goal what is, is. You're, you're crying like a big <clears throat> baby yep. 10 minutes in. Yep. I like want that. Remember Me or something? Yes. Yeah. 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 Or so I want you to cry like Marley and me at the very end when they put the dog Marley. down. Oh. Yeah, like that's clearly just made to emotionally manipulate you. <laughs> I hugged well, my dog I, 40 <laughs> minutes after that. I mean, the dog did actually die dog in real life. Dog. Yeah. yeah. I, dogs do die, but like. I, that's reality, yeah. Gene. Yeah. That's We're not talking about so reality. Tough. We're talking about a movie. Yeah. The dog isn't yeah. immortal. <laughs> Like, yeah. like we understand, there's a difference, yeah. right? You know, right. eventually the dog will die. That's what makes it so tough, is because it's real. Like yeah. I, I legitimately every, hugged my dog for like every pet months. owner knows that one day I'm gonna have to put this thing it's down. It's gonna be yeah. the worst day of your life. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, and I know it's gonna suck, but I love it so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how much time we got, Gene? Uh, we probably got like five minutes. Okay. Uh, real quick, anybody want to? Uh, pop up a uh, quick movie review of anything I've seen recently. Uh, I saw uh, Moonlight. Yes, Gene, talk about Moonlight. 30 seconds, go. It's really good. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, know, no, I like uh, it. Straight to the point. It's really know, good. Um, it sucks. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's just different than anything else about this year. It's, oh, uh, yeah. you know, it's kind of like Boyhood in a way, a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, it was, it was I was really digging it. Um, you know, it was just a really cool narrative and you know uh it's cool to see like uh, a movie about like a uh, you know person like it was like a person of color uh it was uh it was gay that you know you don't really see in many other movies so yeah it, cool. it's not a universal story but that's totally it's fine a, it's, a specific, it's a very specific yeah. story about a very specific person yeah and three uh different narratives Segments? about yeah. becoming who he is you know yeah who is he well, uh, he's Chiron. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta watch it. It's great. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Maharshala Ali, yeah, best was, supporting uh, actor. Cobb, Cobb, Conmouth, Conmouth, Cottonmouth from Luke Cage. Nice, There's, fucking awesome. He, he, he does, awesome. he does he's, awesome. He always does awesome. Fucking great in this Doesn't movie. Do the <laughs> <laughs> oh, the laugh? No, he does. Uh, which are, that's that's really awesome. No, but he goes, really nah, awesome. man. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Yeah, I think yeah. he would be a good. Uh, which I, he'd be a good fucking uh, which I, John Stewart. Yeah, I, I would love him as John Stewart. No, 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 that's not who I wanted, but he would be good also. <laughs> he'd be really good too. Yeah. And he's already out of the fucking MCU. He's dead. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he'll work. Yeah, yeah. Moonlight, Moonlight's great. Yeah, because John Stewart's very like stern. He's, very, he's a very stern man with mm-hmm. attitude. Yeah, he's a, he's, <laughs> he's a Power Ranger basically. He would have been attitude. a Power Ranger, a teenager. He yeah. He uh, been, Nick, he, did you see anything? Definitely would have been the Blue Ranger. Uh, yeah, I saw why him. Oh. Okay. How was that? Um, oh, I, yeah, I, I I liked him. Why him? The uh, which are the Brian Cranston, like the daddy's home, uh, oh, daddy, daddy, daddy's, daddy's home, home. James Franco, you know James Franco, yeah, yeah. you know pretty much bull balls all yeah. the place. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. it 
it, it, it was a funny movie. It, it, it really was funny. I mean, yeah. that, I, it had everything that I was expecting from a Brian Cranston slash, uh, what was it, James Franco movie, uh, yeah. and everything like that. A lot of like really, you know, there was a lot of moments where there was a, kind of like a lull, but you know, I was satisfied by the end. You know, I, yeah. I laughed a good number of times. Totally okay. unrelated, uh-huh. but uh, James Franco is in Alien Covenant. Oh, yeah. is he fucking really? He yeah, for like, yeah, for, for like, yeah. what? Uh, he's the the pilot or the captain. A corpse? No, but he, I mean, prob- <laughs> probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, but likely. you know what's fucking hilarious? Him and Danny McBride are in that. So yep. when, when historians yeah. are going to trace their film trajectory together, like, oh yeah, Pineapple Express, yep. uh, this yep. and that. Alien <laughs> Covenant directed by Ridley Scott. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Just go like, yep. what the fuck happened here? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're both really good actors, you know? So I actually really like Danny McBride. So, yeah, I, I want to see him do something full on serious. Like, have you guys like, seen, uh, what, what show did he do last year? Uh, Vice Principals. Vice Principals. Yeah. Hilarious. Mm-hmm. And then it just has a curve ball and you're like what the f-? I actually still I've only I'm I only an episode in yet. I'm only an episode okay, in okay well I will stop talking yeah. but <laughs> I, I, I do want to watch it the creator said the first season is like uh, a John Hughes comedy okay. and then okay. the second one's like a Brian De Palma film Oh. Now, if, you, if you're familiar with Brian De Palma, the director of Carlito's Way, yeah. Burnout yeah that's weird yeah so <laughs> it, just know it takes some time so so what he's gonna turn into fucking Heisenberg by the end of it? And just like start, I have no start, idea. Start selling some fucking coke on the side. The point is, James Franco, Danny McBride, and Alien <laughs> Covenant together, and we fuck? shouldn't take that for granted. Turns into fucking Scarface. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah. So yeah. No, but uh, that's my it? most anticipated movie of 2017, Vice Principles. Just to know what the <laughs> fuck they're talking about. The, yeah. uh, what was it? I I do think that's gonna be really interesting. Uh, but uh, James Franco. Uh, you know, does what James Franco does yeah. and everything like that. And Brian Cranston, I'm really happy to see him out of the serious role and back into the comedy role. Mm-hmm. He's a which I, he he was well missed mm-hmm. in the comedy aspect and everything right. like that. And um, yeah, I mean, everybody, the entire cast kind of did a, a, a good job, made you kind of care and everything like that. You know, you find out why him. Yeah, I, I did find out why him. And then <laughs> and then the the end of the movie, you were like, oh, well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is that the sequel? Well, why, why not? not? Why yeah. not? It, there, was, there was like a really funny joke where they were like, why was it? I'm, I'm really tired of all these movies where it's like the daughter has to bring home the husband, get approval. Why, why can't she um, as like an adult? Who's coming like, to dinner? Uh, yeah. which are, uh, why can't she just like marry it? Because she can make you know her what? own decision. <laughs> yeah. That, Thank you. But you know what? If we can have all these like, straight movies about I want to see more gay couple movies about yeah. that. You know? Yeah. 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 I think that would be really funny. Also, I do kind of want to see which one's that horror film that's coming out like that. Uh, was it where, like a bunch of black get people out, just yeah. get out? Yeah. That looks fucking awesome. Where it's it's essentially uh, who's coming to dinner, but instead it's like but it's a, a horror movie. But it's a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and like he shows up and like black uh, people Key. keep on going missing in this town. Key. Uh, Keegan Michael Key's doing no. Keegan Michael Mike no. Key is directing. gonna be in the Predator. Yeah, yeah he's in no. The uh, he's directing Get Out. Key, one of the Key and Peele. Yeah, yeah. Mm, Peele is he? Yeah, no. Peele no. is directing Get Out. I thought, really? he, I thought he was. <laughs> that's interesting. Oh, okay. I, I all sense. I know is that I saw that and I was like, oh, that's what YM should have been. Yeah. <laughs> Just a horror movie? It should have been this horror movie. <laughs> James Franco invites him over to his like fancy rich house <laughs> and it's just like a murder house. It's like the collector. <laughs> Well, no, he go because he goes into the basement. And it looks like fucking leather, like Leatherface fucking lives there. <laughs> okay, uh, really quick. Any other last movie things? No. Uh, no. Okay. Um, unless, unless Inglorious Bastards counts. No. No. Uh, I wish it did. I'll just talk Live by Night by like 10 seconds. Uh, oh, I it's a bad to movie. See that. It's, it's bad? Not, it's not awful. Yeah, no, it straight up like just doesn't work. But oh. it's it feels like compromised. Okay. Ben Affleck is still very talented. I'll be there day one for whatever he does next, whether it's the Batman or otherwise. Three out of one is not bad. Uh, yeah, no. I, I, all his other movies are good to great. Mm-hmm. So I love them all. And yeah. he's still a super talent. He shouldn't have starred in it. And he needed to rein it in somehow. And do, it's beautifully shot. Do you think he was so, trying? Everything, do, everything do, about the movie is good except that when you actually watch the movie. No, <laughs> edit, editing. You know bad, what? Uh, you know bad. what? My my thing is that okay. Do you think that he had too many hats? No, I think uh, his life got really stressful for the last two years. Yeah. He did BVS. Uh, he was undergoing did, a divorce, did, so just didn't have enough time. And, yeah. I, I think I think everything went wrong. Right. I think he ran out of time. I think his personal life got in the way. Which I mean, I'm not talking shit. It's just I think a lot of elements worked against him okay. when he was With making this movie. movie. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Because BVS, Justice League, The Accountant, then he did press for all these movies. Yeah. Then he does post on this movie. And then he has more filming and press. To be totally honest, when I heard that Live By Night was coming out this year, I was like, when the fuck did he have time? Yeah. yeah. 
I guess he didn't. Like, when the fuck did you have time? There's an interview with him because they ask him about Batman, and he's like, I took two years to write Live by Night. I directed it, and I've I, started it, and, started and no it. one's fucking asking me about Live by Night. Why? Everyone's asking me yeah. about Batman. And I don't Can, blame him. You know why? Because yeah. fanboys are fucking terrible. Yeah, he's yeah. he's finally he's finally told he, someone, like, stop asking. fucking asking me yeah. about Don't ask Batman. me how, how I mean, Batman funny. is. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know what? That's, that's fine, though, because you know what? Fucking stop bothering the man. You know, yeah. he's let him work. All, all, like you can't you can't go like all oh, give me fucking Batman. Give me fucking Batman. Yeah. Give me fucking Batman. And then go like all oh, and then when it comes out and go like all oh, what the fuck, dude, you rushed it. Yeah. And then he goes, What did you fucking ask, bitch? Yeah. Like fucking back off then. I think that's also why yeah. he's before this last thing, yeah. before we um we wrap up, that he's it kind of feels like he's playing hardball with WB. He's like, I'm not gonna do Batman anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think at, like at first he was like Playing hardball, and then after a while, he was like actually getting legitimately annoyed with yeah. people. Honestly, I think, it's, a- I think it's that and Live by Night. I think both mm-hmm. of them. I think there was an issue with Live by Night. Yeah. That's like kind of pushing this like this little friction between W between Warner Brothers and him mm-hmm. because yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. things haven't really necessarily been the same since BVS. Mm-hmm. After no. BVS, yeah. like things, the relation, the relationship between the two have not been great. Well, I mean, WB and anybody. I, th- I think yeah. uh, James Except- Wan's allowed to do his own thing now because there was rumors that he was going to step away from Aquaman. And he was like, "No, no, guys, it's all cool now." And now he's just, busy. Yeah. Now he's just working on the movie. Right. And I think Affleck's trying to play the same game, and, and that's good because clearly he knows how to make a movie. Mm-hmm. Right. So no, let yeah. him make his movie on yeah. his own time. Yeah. Ben, ben Don't have it tie into anything. Just let him make a ben good Affleck fucking, fucking movie. Comp- he's a very competent director, and he knows exactly what he's doing. And it's a shame. I actually was actually really looking forward to Live by Night. Uh, yeah. So yeah. check it out. I, I don't think it's I, it's ungodly terrible yeah. or anything. Okay. It's, just, I, it's really I'll, not good. I'll watch it. Uh, which yeah. I, but the thing is that I was looking I was looking at it from the same view of like Argo of the Town. No. Or no. Like no. 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 Like oh, well, uh, so it's good. almost yeah. as good as the Godfather Part Three. I was thinking it was. See, I thought I, it was I, gonna, I, okay, I kind of like Godfather not. Three, so no, that's not a complete. What like, I was going disdain. for is, I thought it was going to be like the town in like Prohibition era. <laughs> no. That's what I was no. kind of like going. There, like, are, that's, there are hints of that possible like level of quality, but yeah. it just never gets there. Ah, yeah. oh, yeah. damn, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. All right, but, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and wrap up. Uh, Gene, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram as Gene nine eight nine two. Nick. Uh, which uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, you can also find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter, Nick Valero, 1940. You can also find me on the on another podcast called Not That There's Anything Wrong With It. Mm. Emma. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. My Twitter is Stupid Woman Suit, and my Instagram is A Stun Gun Lullaby. All right, and you can find me on Twitter at Diego Waffles. Uh, the Waffle Press on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, YouTube. Like, subscribe <laughs> if you enjoyed this. If you didn't like this, like and subscribe anyways. You might find something you do like. Uh, We have been the Waffle Press Podcast, and we have been professionally unprofessional.